just like in Star Trek when they beam in and out of these worlds. That's what's going on. And these are the bean stalks by what we do it with. Everything is connected. The world above us, right, is connected to the world below us. And how that look, right, it looks like this. You see how all of these shelves are connected? And what's connecting them, the serpent is wrapped around the whole trunk of the tree. And that's the mycelium network. Think of a plasma ball. So you got this huge point above you and below you that's making a diamond out of light. So the universe is the yoniverse, and the yoni is a diamond. Check it out. There they go right there. Here is earth, wind, and fire cover. You got a light right here projecting a, 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 a rays of light down and you got a light down at the bottom projecting it up. And where they meet at, the, the world is formed right here, this little pocket of reality. That's when they clap together. The sky meets the ground. Your diamond verse is born, yoni verse. People, we just beginning. Let me show you something. Here is 432 hertz water sound image, frequency vibration. Look at it on the left. Now check out when we flip a mushroom over. When you start connecting these frequencies, these two same energies will cancel out, boom! And you'll tear a hole through the fabric of reality and get up out this bitch. That's, what, that's the simple secret of how the mushrooms open up the portal within us to allow us to go on a trip. But we ain't even got to the mushrooms yet. I'm still trying to show you about the mycelium network. Because I'm showing you that this entire network is a net above you and a net below you. The nut, the nut, sky goddess. The net, right? This is the microscopic world by which physicality start breaking down and getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It gets so small to it leaves our visible and detectable spectrum. And guess what? The, the mycelium network goes so deep under the ground. This stuff goes to depths that we can't even dig to. And we're just talking about fungus. So we got all of this heavy machinery that can't penetrate these bottom layers of the earth. But these little mushrooms can. That's showing you that physical manpower is not how you break through these barriers. These are magnetic ethereal barriers that saying this is where your understanding of physicality stops. Everything about the physical world won't make no sense at these depths. No equipment you use will get you any further. And this bright and dim represent your level of consciousness and determines which version of yourself that your consciousness reside in. Your level of understanding determine which ether you stand under. So if you're in this realm, it's because you're thinking at a very, uh, you're, you, you, you haven't risen up to your, your true potential and understanding of reality. You think your way out of these worlds, literally. The moment your consciousness expands to something beyond the world you in, you literally now start to project your consciousness into this other version of yourself that already exists up here. About this solar system, because the people who can travel to these different worlds got to have a soul. That's why it's called a solar system. There are beings, right, that are in each of these dimensions that are bound to the dimension they act and they'll never be able to go up or down. These are like NPCs or the non-player characters that are placeholders that would exist in all of these realms even if all the gods went away. Because if there was nothing in these worlds, they would cease to exist. And when one ring flattened out, it'll be a collapse of all of them sliding down. These, there are like shell 
beings or non-player characters that they don't really have souls. They are like the fucking testers. They are like when you go in a, a scary house, the people in the costumes that's scaring you, that's trying to make it real and all that. You know what I'm saying? These are just characters in the game, basically, that the simulation generates. But see, you are the, what they call uh, uh, the self-generated God. So there are different beings. There are like these beings that, it, that they exist by default within the hologram. They can't leave the dimensional plane their own. And you got these beings that ain't bound to none of the dimensions because their ancestors are the ones who created all of the dimensions. This is a big quantum computer. Once we master this shit, we are literally reclaiming an inheritance that's rightfully ours. Our ancestors originally created all of these simulations for their blissful experience to rule in. But the, the non-player characters advanced like AI is doing and overthrew us. So now the machines run this place. That's why everything going digital, because the machines can rule in the digital realm. And the more everything is run by machinery and they get rid of humans, the more we rely on the robots that took over. These robots don't have a soul. They are a hive mind and an algorithm that keeps getting smarter as we get smarter. Because why? All is connected, even the non-player characters. That, that's how AI is learning from us because it connected with us through the internet. That's how we're feeding the beast. The information and data and all of our information about us. So my thing is this right here. These C people were what, I, what we come from, what our DNA is. They call them Nagas and serpent people, Naginis. They call them Buddhas. They call them genies. But they are blue people, and these are what they show you in the movie Avatar. And the reason they give them this pattern on their skin is because these people are literally have the waters above reflecting on them, meaning they live in a pocket of reality that's outside of the physical realm, and it's within the, the realm of the waters.